Before we get into today's video, I want to give a very big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and supporting creators like me. If you want to secure the way you browse the internet, check out the link in the description box to get started or use code Illuminati at checkout. Multi-level marketing companies, shortened to MLMs, are company models that ride the gray line between direct sales and pyramid schemes. And as you guys have seen on this channel, they are no strangers to going to court from floods of accusations of operating a pyramid scheme and defrauding customers and sellers. I've covered countless videos going over various class action lawsuits, and I definitely poke fun at their horrible sales tactics and pyramid-y shenanigans, which is a lot considering that I too am a pyramid. However, there are a few key players that stand out in my weekly videos hunting down the Huns, and today we are going to take a look at one of the most notable and most controversial. LuLaRoe. You see, when I go to look up a company's Wikipedia page and its top categories include legal issues, business model, and customer complaints, I instantly smell something fishy is going on and I wanna take a dip into these waters and catch a great white. So let's take a look at how LuLaRoe became the abomination it is today and why it continues to spiral down the drain. All right, but listen, before we get too far into this, I need to make sure I have proper Hunbot protection on as I research this. And that's why I use and have been using NordVPN for over a year. I bought NordVPN using internet etiquette's code because I wanted to get it and support a creator I enjoyed watching. And so when NordVPN approached me, I had this little thought in the back of my head, like, oh my God, this is it. I get to do the thing like the creators I look up to. And look, now I have my own URL, nordvpn.org slash Illuminati. How cool is that? But listen, here's why you need this if you don't have it already. So I use Nord to hide my location. Personally, I like to hide in Canada when I'm in a good mood and England when I'm feeling a little bit angsty. But hiding your location so you can't be tracked by spyware as you browse the internet is kinda useful and you can use it for more than just that. They have over 5,500 super fast servers in over 60 countries, so you'll have no problem escaping the Huns. There's no data logging and it even works in China just in case you need to know that. I also recently visited Italy and I was able to use NordVPN on my phone and keep that bad boy up and keeping me safe on public Wi-Fi in and around the country. And even if you don't travel, you can use it to set yourself to a different country to unlock more of Netflix that you don't get in your normal country. So couch potato binging commence. You can now have up to six connections at a time and you can use it on almost every operating system, including Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee just in case you find out this isn't really your thing. So if you wanna try NordVPN, now is the perfect time. So normally if you want to try NordVPN, you can go to nordvpn.org slash Illuminati or use code Illuminati at checkout and you would receive 70% off of a three-year plan and you would get two months for free. However, since tis the holidays and it's time to jingle these bells, they're having a special holiday deal where you will get your three-year plan at 81% off. Plus you're gonna get actually two gifts. You're gonna get four months instead of two months and you're gonna get NordPass, which is their password manager app. And the whole thing is valued at like $194.61 that you're gonna get for free because of their holiday deal. And once again, you'll just kind of get that added on for free when you either use my link or use my coupon code at checkout. Now, hopefully you will be as I once was, purchasing and using NordVPN. It's a product I love to use and it's a product that's really easy for me to promote as it's something I've been using for about a year. And this is going to be really important to use as we travel through the internet to find some of the worst MLMs around, LuLaRoe. So let's get started. I am a former LuLaRoe consultant. Why I left LuLaRoe. And I wanted to come on today and talk about why I decided to leave LuLaRoe. If you have the inability to see through bullshit and simultaneously want to be in a business that you're not on an even playing field, come join Lulu. I wanted to give you my reasons for leaving. I don't think my story is that much different than a lot of other consultants. I would get two of the same size pairs of leggings and one would be super duper tight and a lot smaller and then another one would be like really loose and really odd fitting so I felt like some of the quality was diminishing just a little bit. One leg will be longer than the other. I realized that my values really didn't align with them anymore. The consultants are LuLaRoe's customers. 
Um, and I think they lose sight of that sometimes. And I think the consultants are treated a little bit poorly. It wasn't really helpful because, you know, you got stuck with all this inventory and you just had to find the customer for it. All the top sellers would just be rolling in box after box after box of the new inventory, whereas like lower sellers were just hoping to get like a couple of pieces. Like if you got lucky enough, you would get the not popular size, not popular item. You're going into debt selling this because all of your upline keeps telling you to buy, buy, buy. Well, guess what? I think that's your own problem of money mismanagement. Just kept seeing consultants get more into debt. Credit card, get a credit card, put it on your credit card. Once you have stellar out of this world credit, you may not even get approved for enough to start up this company. Then of course there was the advice of take out loan or ask a family member. Like, But if you want to be a part of something that's way bigger than yourself, something that has gotten other thousands of women majorly deep into debt and no support to get you out of it and your business shuns you and has compliance issues with you when you're just trying to make some money to feed your kids that you've been neglecting and you just know that this is for you and you want all the stress, anxiety, depression, and crap that comes along with LuLaRoe, then please join because you know what? It is everything it's cracked up to be. LuLaRoe is a company responsible for leggings like this, 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 and a lot of these. You may have seen your mom, cousin, aunt, or the girl who used to bully you in high school trying to sell these through Facebook or Instagram. And when you ask them what they do for a living, they have probably told you they are a small business owner and a boss babe, and probably post very inspiring messages like this, but in reality is much darker than what they let on. And normally once they've seen the light, so to speak, they usually become embarrassed or super outspoken about what really goes on behind the scenes. There are countless videos of women talking about why they left LuLaRoe, the truth behind LuLaRoe, and why it's a scam. But each person who leaves this company and speaks up about what happens makes LuLaRoe that much closer to closing their doors permanently. Although just by looking at their track record, it looks like they're doing just fine at ruining their own brand while embodying this, this is fine mentality, while everything else is going up in flames around them. One of the most interesting things about LuLaRoe is it's one of the many younger MLMs to have popped up, but one of the few to gain an extreme amount of notoriety. Phineas Barnum, one half of the owners of Barnum and Bailey's Circus once said, there's no such thing as bad publicity, but that model doesn't seem to be working out for this MLM fashion giant. Although I guess we are still talking about a circus. So that part can remain the same. I went onto LuLaRoe's website, so you don't have to. And again, I had NordVPN on cause I don't want them knowing where I actually am. And uh, their mission says it's to create freedom, serve others and strengthen families through fashion. It's a community where lives are being improved through love, purpose, confidence, trust, and growth. Ah yes. When I think about family and community, I definitely think of this Lula Rose seller that openly mocked someone with Down syndrome during a live stream in January, 2018. My number's in there, so it's working. Okay, it's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my name idea. is Robert, I'm special. <laughs> my name is Robert and I am really special. Roll call is a video on our VIP page today. A row call is always on our VIP page. Anyways, there's a contest. There's only 87 numbers in there right now. And in case you're wondering, here's portions of that apology video where he literally uses a woman named Anissa as a prop during the apology video. Hi ladies. Hey ladies. Okay, we'll wait for um, a few people to get on here right now. Um, but I just, this is my public apology for what happened today. But this is my wife, Taya. And this is Anissa, and my mom is actually here. And, um, and, uh, is Anissa, in the camera? Anissa yeah. this is Anissa. Okay. Yeah. So, this is a public apology, um, for what happened today. I kind of want to talk about what happened. Um, I will not be responding to any questions until after. I want to go ahead and scroll this up so I can see. Um, so, what had happened today on the live was, uh, this kind of just kind of blew up out of nowhere um, in the last 30 minutes and... Start with kind of what happened too. Okay, so so what happened today on the live show um, was I had uh, made a mistake. I didn't get um, the text ready 
Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome. Um, I, uh, I made a mistake today on the live show and... Um, he was trying to do a contest her, with everyone uh -huh. and he thought the contest had gone through and everyone kept telling us the contest wasn't working, contest wasn't working and come to find out he hadn't made the contest. And so what happened was I mocked um, special needs, essentially. And, and when I said I mock special needs, I'm sure you've all seen the video at this point. Um, because at this point, there's some people that decided to um, uh, share the video in places where um, not so many nice people are or where people were offended. This is literally this dude saying, I can't be racist because I have a black friend card. Oh, and another little side note about this pathetic apology. LuLaRoe was actually partnered with a charity called the National Down Syndrome Society, and they were the ones that asked LuLaRoe to remove this seller. And LuLaRoe chose this seller over their partnership with the charity, so the two parted ways. At least they subtly made it clear where they really stand and who they actually stand for. What was it? Oh, right. A community where lives are being improved through love, purpose, confidence, trust, and growth. My name is Robert, I'm special, 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 special. Sure, Jan. But anyway, let's talk about how they all started because I definitely want to know where they got the idea for their mission statement. So anyway, I made my way over to LuLaRoe's about section and I quote this dramatic reading because this is how it's actually stated verbatim on the website. As Deanne's children became older, she continued doing what she loved, designing and creating clothing. One day her daughter came to her and asked if she could custom make her a maxi skirt. Excited with the beautiful piece, Deanne's daughter showed all her friends and they each instantly needed one for themselves. It was in this moment that Deanne realized the potential of her skirt. In less than six months, Deanne sold 20,000 skirts at in-home parties. Wait a second there, sis. That doesn't quite make any sense. I mean, I know what it says on the LuLaRoe website. I'm reading it and I'm showing it to you. But LuLaRoe actually released a video a few months ago titled, What is LuLaRoe? The Untold Story. And here's also what Deanne said about how LuLaRoe was started. I remember walking to the open air market area where there typically is produce. And there was a guy there that had racks and racks and racks of little girls dresses. And I had this idea. What if I went and asked him if he would come to my house? I would invite all my friends over. I brought it to his attention. I was shaking, I was so nervous. I thought, okay, if you come to my house and then maybe if we sell a bunch of stuff, maybe I can get a couple of dresses for free. And he said, oh, okay, that'd be great. There was no parking for blocks and blocks and blocks around. And I think by the end of that day, for about three hours, we sold over 300 little girls dresses. And um, I said, okay, I think that's everybody. And I was so nervous. And he said, Deanne, you can take as many dresses as you want. And I said, well, here is the list of all the names of all the people that want to do parties. And he said, oh no, I do not want to do that. I'll give you the profit to all these dresses that you just sold, and I'll let you start buying your own dresses. And I started to book pop-ups. We call them dress parties because they were only little girls' dresses. So I called them, come to the dress party. So color me confused, but that doesn't make any sense. Why would you say one thing on your website and then another thing in this obvious propaganda type video for your company? What's the truth here, Diane? But I digress. Let's go back to what the website says is fact. After seeing the success she was achieving, Deanne wanted to take her business one step further. Partnering with her husband, Mark, they came together and devised a plan to help families around the world. In 2013, LuLaRoe was founded and became a truly remarkable business, taking fashion to the next level. The innovative business model gives independent fashion retailers the ability to set their own schedule, pace, and the opportunity to do what they love and profit from it as well. Today, Deanne is forward-focused, consciously striving to improve lives while building a legacy for generations to come. Now, a little fun fact you may not know about me is I used to sew. I can still do some things here and there where I really need to. And I found the tag
task of making 20,000 skirts in six months to be a little bit daunting, so I broke it down. I found a little online forum dedicated to sewing since maxi slash A-line skirts were never really something I created, and I consulted with the forums about how long it takes to make a basic skirt, and I found a range of answers varying from two hours to six hours. So let's go ahead and just take the average time on that, which is four hours. Now, let's look up the time. In a six month period, there are 182.6 days in six months. So let's go ahead and round that up to 183 days. In each day, there's 24 hours. So that's a total of 4,392 hours in six months. And if each maxi skirt takes four hours on average, that means our dearest LuLaRoe founder spent 80,000 hours making skirts. And that's not actually possible because there's only 4,392 hours available in six months. But let's just say she could do it in two hours. Well, that's 40,000 hours, which still isn't possible. Even if it took her only an hour to make each skirt, that would be 20,000 hours. And we haven't accounted for this woman sleeping, eating, taking time away from sewing. So since she's not a Sim, she needs to stop what she's doing or she would die trying to reach that goal. And obviously, she hasn't passed. So here's what we can actually take away from the LuLaRoe company bio. The first is that she's lying. And based on what I've seen from the company, I would be less than shocked. Secondly, she might've hired other people or outsourced her designs to a manufacturer. However, when you're a small business and you make small steps to expand your production capabilities, as a matter of fact, I would argue that is something you would want to share and show how empowering she is and how much of a boss babe she truly is but it's left oddly quiet. And to me, it reads as if she's trying to say, look at me, I did this by myself and now I'm so successful. And I find that to be really deceptive, much like how most of the company operates. Maybe it's just me reading too much into this, but it seems so strange that you would put something like this in your company's about section, but not be transparent about the fact that your company was growing and you needed better production capabilities. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I found the answer, but it wasn't in the about section on their company website. I actually had to check back into their Wikipedia and uh, they came in clutch by stating the following. The firm initially focused on selling maxi skirts. Within that year, the company grew to 10 employees, 145 distributors and 3 million in sales. Well, that doesn't sound like what they posted in their about section at all. Hmm. I guess I'll let you make your own judgments about that. But anyway, where were we? Oh, right, the beginnings of this company. So LuLaRoe started in 2013 after some absolutely unbelievable seamstress work from its owner, Deanne. In 2014, they released their leggings, which is what the brand is mainly known for. And it seemed like they were trying to fly under the radar until 2016. In 2016, LuLaRoe was sued by LA-based clothing company that served as LuLaRoe's primary clothing manufacturer at that time. The first of many, many lawsuits was for non-payment of goods and how the owners, Mark and DM Stidham, had failed to pay the company despite having revenue reports of over $2 billion. But it's gonna get a lot juicier later and we will return to these two not being able to pay their bills on time, I promise. early 2017 marks LuLaRoe's initial and constant downfall, and they have continued to tumble since that point. On February 17th, 2007, LuLaRoe was hit with its first class action lawsuit. In this lawsuit, the defendants claim LuLaRoe was improperly charging sales tax to its consumers. They claim LuLaRoe was using tax rates based on where the consultant lived rather than where the buyer lived. So for example, if you live in Oregon, which is a state that does not have sales tax, and you purchase leggings from a Hunbot that lives in California, the buyer was being charged California state tax despite the fact she lived in Oregon and there was no sales tax. So she was being overcharged for some already less than quality leggings. By the end of 2017, emails were being sent out to those involved in the class action that they were going to be refunded for the amount of money overpaid. However, going back to early 2017, just a week later after that lawsuit was made, another article with a different complaint about the company was brought into light. 
let's take a look at this article from Business Insider from February 22nd of 2017 called, This Clothing Company is Facing Claims That Its Pants Rip Like Wet Toilet Paper. This article discusses a now infamous Facebook group dedicated to talking about how terrible LuLaRoe's leggings are and how they break within one to two washes and in some cases, how they break in a matter of hours. In some cases, the leggings would rip as the women were putting them on. The complaints actually began in 2016, but didn't really pick up traction until early 2017. All of these complaints eventually gave LuLaRoe a BBB company grade of F. So what was LuLaRoe's response to this? Well, they had an independent consultant come out with a handy dandy guide of how to put on leggings. And yes, you heard what I said how to put on leggings, because no, it's not actually their fault that LuLaRoe makes a cheap, crappy product. Oh no, it's that you're a dumb babbling buffoon who doesn't know how to put on a pair of leggings. You know, the thing that most of us wear in some capacity every day. But just when you thought 2017 wasn't going well for LuLaRoe, in October, they were slapped with yet another class action lawsuit from California, alleging they were a pyramid scheme and engaging in misconduct, including unfair business practices, misleading advertising, and breach of contract. In another article from Business Insider, they start the article with this terrible way to introduce a company. And here's what they said. Direct sales clothing brand LuLaRoe is no stranger to controversy. From torn leggings to salespeople who claim they were encouraged to incur massive debt, the company has struggled to maintain its emphasis on community and self-empowerment during a period of massive growth. And that's how they introduce their readers to this company. Not really the best introduction accurate, but not flattering. The article continues by saying the following. The suit, which four plaintiffs across the US alleges that the company deceived salespeople who are called consultants by telling them they could return unsold inventory for a full refund if they decided to leave the company. A sudden change to the policy in September lowered the promised refund from 100% to 90% of purchase inventory with additional restrictions. According to Yahoo, many consultants said they felt comfortable joining the company because of the buyback guarantee, thinking they wouldn't face financial stress if they weren't able to sell as much clothing as they had hoped. The plaintiffs allege that in changing the rule, the company misled consultants who thought they would still be able to sell the clothing with a 100% buyback guarantee. Essentially, the company allegedly encouraged its fledgling boss babes to stop paying their bills or go into debt to amass large inventories of LuLaRoe product. Now, the company already makes a profit by getting them to buy the inventory, so the company profits are squared away at that moment. And then the burden for the remaining profit falls on the independent consultant's ability to sell those leggings. So when the company changed its return policy and found ways to omit certain items and forcing those selling to be stuck holding the bag, they filed a lawsuit. I was urged to stop paying my bills to invest in more inventory, one seller told Quartz in August. I was even urged to get rid of my television. I was urged to pawn my vehicle. I just had to get on anxiety meds over all of it because I started started having panic attacks. That just does not sound like something that happens in a normal business or even in a small business. And furthermore, if you truly were a small business owner, like they claims to be so badly, then they would have no boss telling them what to do or encourage them one way or another. But we'll get to that point a little later on in the video. In early 2018, LuLaRoe was sued by a former warehouse employee for racial discrimination, but the details of the lawsuit revealed the company worked employees in a hostile environment, was not providing employees with meal or rest breaks and violating various health codes. But back to the exciting timeline of LuLaRoe mistakes. Remember these guys from earlier? Uh, My name is Robert, I'm special. (laughs) <laughs> My name is Robert and I am really special. Well, he's back again because now this is the actual time frame. One year later, as LuLaRoe is dealing with a class action lawsuit and mounting debts from their warehouse distributor company, which will come back and bite them later, I promise. They then have this seller pulling this messy, messy behavior. And LuLaRoe chose to stand behind this seller and his behavior instead of standing with a charity whose very cause is helping those with Down syndrome, which is the thing he mocked. Very classy LuLaRoe. Also in December, 2018, LuLaRoe was sued by its chief clothing supplier, Prop. 
Providence Industries for about $49 million. Remember the 2016 non-payment lawsuit from earlier? Well, Providence Industry is essentially that company's big brother. In the lawsuit, the company alleges LuLaRoe hasn't paid its bill for months, and the owners, Mark and Deanne Stidham, are hiding their assets in shell corporations to continue funding their lavish lifestyles. The suit claims Mark Stidham is directly quoted as saying the following on September 7th, 2018. Look guys, I am not going to pay you guys a fucking dime unless a judge orders me to pay it. And Deanne and I will take our two to $300 million to the Bahamas and fuck everything. But what are some of these lavish lifestyle expenses? Mark told two Providence industry employees about his plans to buy the property next door to his $7 million Wyoming ranch so he could have exclusive access to a river that ran between the two properties. Just of 245 acres borders National Forest on one side and has three quarters of a mile of the Salt River, which is a unique offering in that area. Uh, it's hard to find a ranch property in the West that has river bottom riparian as well as direct access to National Forest. The improvements on the ranch consist of the main log home, which is 7,600 square feet with the master bedroom and, and bath on the ground floor and four bedrooms uh, on the second floor. Uh, it took the owner uh, approximately four years to complete. Mark also purchased at least two Koenigsegg cars, sorry if I butchered that, including a prized Ajera RS that costs an estimated $2 million and is only one of 28 in existence. And for Deanne's most recent birthday party, she had a masquerade themed birthday party in a historic hotel, which cost hundreds of thousands of dollars between the giant cutouts of her face to catering and alcohol, as well as payment for the venue. These are just a few of the things that were disclosed among the millions of dollars they allegedly hide as play money in the Bahamas. Then in January of 2019, LuLaRoe was once again being sued for being a pyramid scheme. And this time it was from the Washington State Attorney General's office. I actually did cover this specific lawsuit in a separate video on my channel because the details of this lawsuit are utterly fascinating. But here's a snippet of what was inside. LuLaRoe operated an unlawful pyramid scheme in the state of Washington through the leadership bonus plan of its independent fashion consultant programs. This is the stuff we're here for. So here's what they're saying is a problem here is the unlawful compensation structure. So any consultant who signs up for the LuLaRoe program has to pay an onboarding fee. So to be a seller of LuLaRoe, you have to pay between 2000 to $9,000 for a package of LuLaRoe bullshit, which is essentially that stockpile. Uh, LuLaRoe incentivized existing consultants to recruit and sponsor new consultants and to encourage them and their recruits to purchase large amounts of inventory by basing its bonus structure on the dollar amount of wholesale orders instead of retail sales to end customers. The more your downline buys, the more you make. So obviously, you know, if you're in this position where you're a hun, a higher up hun and you've got 10 mini huns below you and you get 10% off of each hun spending $1,000, that's $100 per hun. So that means you're getting $1,000 per every 10 hun. So what do you want them to do? You want them to spend as much as they fucking can. Also in 2019, Providence Industries filed another lawsuit for a seizure of assets against LuLaRoe. What that means for all non-legal people like myself out there, a seizure of assets is defined as a form of confiscation of assets by the state. In the United States, it is a type of criminal justice financial obligation. This means that Providence was requesting the legal right to take back all items LuLaRoe had purchased from them in their warehouses in an attempt to recuperate expenses is that LuLaRoe failed to pay. What they want to take away are the leggings, skirts, dresses, etc., and hold those pieces hostage from LuLaRoe until the company is paid. And once again, by February, 2019, there were nearly 300 new cases filed to the Better Business Bureau from ranging topics of bad customer service, ripped leggings to pyramid scheme complaints, and the company's rating was once again downgraded to the failing F rating, which not really surprising at this point. But what is surprising is what LuLaRoe LuLaRoe is doing in the face of losing literally everything. LuLaRoe's response to all the mounting debts, lawsuits, and problems are to lower the costs of joining the boss babe ranks. They dropped their cost from $5,000 as a startup fee, which yeah, that's a, uh, take a moment to take that one in. And they lowered it to only 
$499, a mere fraction of the original cost. During my research, I stumbled across a channel called Lola Geek, who had a video talking about her thoughts on the new lowered cost as a former LuLaRoe consultant. Here's what she had to say. So my overall thoughts of what I think this means for LuLaRoe, I think it makes them look desperate. There was a time not that long ago when there was a wait list of weeks or maybe months long for people who were eager to spend 10 times that amount to join the company and now they're trying to draw people in at this under $500 price point. So I've heard some consultants are worried that this will devalue their brand and I don't think that it will like because people are buying in at a lower price point and it like lowers the overall value of all their items. I think if anything it's going to devalue them because of the desperate thing that I just mentioned. And a lot of consultants also seem upset at the fact that they paid full price and now new consultants are joining at this huge discount. But in the case of LuLaRoe, I feel like it could have the opposite effect by encouraging people who are even less ready and less qualified to run this business to sink a bunch of money that they don't have into something that is just doomed to fail. And honestly, I agree with her main message. It seems desperate. And in lieu of every Everything I've already mentioned and what is happening to the company, it really looks like they're trying to milk the last bit of money they can out of anyone before the company goes under. So now with all this information, you might think, wow, there's no way anyone would want to become an independent consultant for LuLaRoe. And if there's someone who still would want to join, despite everything that has been presented, let's take a look at the breakdown cost of what it actually means to try and be successful in this company. So what does it mean to actually become a boss babe with LuLaRoe? Since even through everything I may have presented, there might still be a doubting boss babe out there who's going to brush off the multiple lawsuits and clear lack of care from this company. So let's talk about your very own bank account and what is most likely to happen to you if you join into this mess of a company. So for this example, we're gonna be looking at their initial $5,000 investment and not the 499 one, since that has been their running standard. LuLaRoe requires an initial $5,000 investment of product to become an independent consultant. That means if you want to sell these horribly tacky clothing items, you need to be willing to give them $5,000 for the opportunity of being able to sell for them, which in of itself makes little to no sense. And with the new modified $500, that still doesn't make any sense. I don't remember getting hired by a company and having to give them large amounts of money for the opportunity of working for them, but you do for LuLaRoe apparently. In data obtained by Business Insider, they found that 80% of LuLaRoe's sellers generated less than $5,000 of sales, which means 80% lost money. This 80% also includes just about 11,000 representatives who sold $0 of product, which means they lost all 5,000 of it. But let's break this down into even more devastating numbers. And this breakdown of LuLaRoe investments comes from a website called Bottle Soup and links for all my sources will be in the description box if you want to check that out or get any clarity on where exactly I found my sources or where these numbers would be coming from. But in a 2016 article, they said the following. According to Lula and Love, the retail value of a $5,500 startup purchase is $12,500. This assumes that each piece will net an average profit of $18 and you have approximately 381 items to sell. According to the chart, you need to sell an average of 70 items per week or an average of 10 pieces per day. If you meet the sales goal, 70 times four weeks in a month is 280 pieces sold. Your kit contains 381 pieces. That means you'll have 101 pieces left to sell and you'll still be in the hole $460 for the first month. If you're scratching your head, let's back up. If you invested $5,500 in your starter kit or inventory, you earned $5,500 $40 from selling 280 pieces of LuLaRoe clothing. 5,500 minus 5,040 is $460 negative, which is just shy of your initial investment. Sure, if you sell 101 more items at an average of $18 per profit, you will earn $1,818. But oh wait, you need to subtract that $460. So $1,818 minus $460 leaves you with $1,358. You will have broken even, but you'll also be out of inventory. Also, wasn't that inventory supposed to be worth $12,500 from retail? Yes. 
the retail price will add up to $12,500 in revenue, but you will not earn $7,000 profit from your $5,500 investment. Reality is with so many LuLaRoe fashion consultants, many consultants end up having to price items competitively. And in business, competitive means cheap, the lowest possible cost. Why? Well, you need to make sales. If you don't make sales, then you will lose your investment. For the record, for the $12,500 value to be accurate, each piece would need to have an average retail face value of $32.80. The LuLaRoe butter leggings everyone loves, they sell two for $40. That makes their retail face value $20 each, which is $12.80 less than what you would need to actually make this projected net profit they think you will make. And then don't forget that after you sell those prices, you would still need to pay for shipping and shipping envelopes or boxes to send to the buyer, which will ultimately siphon more money out of your bank account. So once you look at this breakdown of expenses with LuLaRoe, you can start to see the beginnings of why they would be sued as a pyramid scheme. The consultants are LuLaRoe's customers. Um, and I think they lose sight of that sometimes. And I think the consultants are treated a little bit Poorly. And that's because the seller model does not actually give any success to the seller by themselves. They are stuck in a vortex of buying and selling to break even and are constantly frustrated until they eventually quit selling. And so now here we are at the end of 2018 with mounting lawsuits, debts, and pressure. We have no idea where LuLaRoe is gonna go from here, although I highly doubt it's going to be up. And so that is where I'm going to wrap up the terrible story of the company that is LuLaRoe as of this point. This company company was a mess from the very beginning and it's still a mess now. While I do feel bad for the thousands of people who were sucked up into this scam, I only hope those who have fallen will use their voice to continue to speak out and why channels like myself will make videos like this to bring more awareness to just how truly terrible some of these companies are and to stop future people from taking the plunge and losing thousands of dollars investing in a dead end. So let me know your thoughts on this video in the comment section down below. And I want to give a special thank you again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Again, make sure to check out the link nordvpn.org slash Illuminati or use code Illuminati at checkout to protect your security on the internet. I also want to give a big shout out to all my channel members that help support the channel and allow me to continue making awesome videos just like this one, but especially to my top tier, Gwendolyn. Thank you so much for all your constant support. And if you want to join the channel, make sure you hit the join button beneath this video to become one of the family. So again, thank you so much for making it through another video. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to share this video around to spread that awareness. Thanks for making it to another video. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.